So my topic is what happens after revolve after the takbirs. I actually embrace Islam after 9/11. Nobody gave me a pamphlet. I did not have a Muslim boss or friends, and I struggled from very early on. My breakdowns actually have led me to the biggest breakthroughs, and I'll tell you why. I lost a job early on. When I decided to actually put on the hijab, I was working for a Jewish doctor that did not allow me to put on the headscarf, and so my struggles began right there and then. Not alone, that, that's just one situation. But going back to the day I actually took Shahada, I took Shahada at the North Hudson Islamic Educational Center in New Jersey. All I remember that day was, it was the last day of Ramadan. I started going to the masjid, so everybody assumed I was Muslim even before I accepted Islam. So I did experience the marginalization that is happening out there inside the masjid very early on. And it's very unfortunate that we have to go through these as reverts. Unfortunately, a lot of sisters were point on at the door to fix my hijab when my hijab, my hijab didn't need to be fixed. My hijab did not need to be moved or extra pins, I really needed to learn how to pray. And nobody ever asked me, do I know how to pray? So next time you do come encounter to a sister, before you start touching her hijab or how she's dressed or whatever the exterior looks like, think for a minute if she has food in her refrigerator, if she's a single mother like myself, does her children have shoes? Before you start Looking at the outside, please, please, sisters, be compassionate. Compassionate is what we need. And we're lacking of this compassionate, and we have the best prophet, the best mankind came, and he taught us compassion. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was the most compassionate man that walked this earth. Yet today in our masjids, we lack of this compassion. I'm here, actually, let me tell you, this session has been a dream come true for me. I've been working in Dawa for years now, and I've been trying to advocate for my reverts. Can you raise your hands? My reverts, just look around. There are hundreds of thousands of reverts, mashallah, but just as easy as they're, as they're coming in, unfortunately, they're also leaving. And guess who is responsible for that? You and I. All of us in this room are responsible for our reverts, brothers and sisters, converts, however you want to label us. See, labeling is not important anymore. That's beyond. The other day I was asking a sister, when do I graduate? When do I stop being a revert and I become just a Muslim? When does that happen? I pray like you. I bleed like you, I hurt like you. When do I just become a Muslim? It's very important, my brothers and sisters, that if you take anything today, Ramadan is around the corner. It's just around the corner. And I say this every single year. And after this session, we have the revert stories at two o'clock, so please do join us. Please, compassionate, I cannot stress it enough. We are lacking in this, and so many are leaving. You see, look at us like a tree. We are a tree, and if our foundation is good, those roots are going to grow. That trunk is going to be firm. Those branches are going to be strong, and those leaves will fall seasonally. But when that wind, those trial and turbulence come, that trunk will stay still. What do we need? 
We need each other. I need everyone to leave here reaching out to a revert, reaching out to a convert. Next time you go to the masjid, you know, there is a masjid in Dallas, and I won't say the name, but there is a masjid in Dallas, and this has been the only masjid that I have ever felt 120% welcome. There is not a time that I don't visit this masjid that they don't come up to me and ask me because they know I don't belong there. I'm not from this area, that they greet me with a smile. We lack of that. I see it here. We're here to be together, to embrace each other, to love each other for the sake of Allah. Yet when I give salams, I get a dry face. Why? Why does that still happen? Do you know that a smile is charity? We know this. And we, we get it thrown at us over and over and over. But what do we do about it? I'll tell you what we're doing about it in Dallas. In Dallas, alhamdulillah, I've had the pleasure and honor to lead on a new organization under ICNA. We titled it Embrace. Think about the word for five seconds. What comes to mind? Embrace the word itself. We embrace Islam. We embrace each other. We're supposed to. We embrace as the act. We embrace each other when we see each other, when we haven't seen each other. Most of you have traveled from, from very far, and you're here. And so when you see your sisters and your brothers, you embrace them. So for that reason, we took on this title of embrace. What is embrace? What is our mission? Our mission is to empower, embrace, integrate, nourish, service our diverse Muslim revert, reverts by providing safe social spaces that encourage growth, shape their Islamic identity, equip them with knowledge they will need for the rest of their lives. See, knowledge doesn't come with one month. I was in Egypt studying for a month. That wasn't enough. It will never be enough. The other thing I want to, uh, uh, so Embrace is happening. So if you guys have Facebook, please look us up. Alhamdulillah, last night we had a meet and greet up there as well, not knowing what their identity. So this is second generation, first generation born, second generation being Muslims. Do we see the trend here? We're not finding ourselves. We're not being compassionate to ourselves. And this word, you're going to hear it over and over from me, compassion. We need to have this compassion for one another. We're lacking. We're lacking in this compassion. So my brothers and sisters, enough of the mar marginalization in here. It's happening outside already. A couple days ago, our sheikhs were praying, were burying actually a brother, Stefan Clark, my revert, fellow revert brother. And so this is happening too often. We need to really embrace each other. So. Do me a favor, two seconds, embrace the person to your right. Tell them you love them. It's important to tell them you love them. It's important to emphasize this over and over and get to know one another. Let's get to know one another. At the airport, and I'll end with this, I was coming in from Dallas, and at the airport, um, I see three women, Mennonite. I didn't know that they were Mennonite. I thought they were Amish. And so I'm the type of person that l tries to live by the verses I learn. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that he has created us into nations and tribes to get to know one another. Do we ever get out of our comfort zones and really get to know one another? Well, this is exactly what I did. I was very attracted to her clothing. She was dressed modest and she had a somewhat hijab. And so I rushed up to her as we were going to baggage claim. And I said, hello, my name is Nahela. And she looked at me as if I had five heads, like, are you talking to me? And I said, yeah, I'm talking to you. I said, can I ask you if you're Amish? And obviously, I was giving her a religion that wasn't her, hers. And so she said, no, 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 I'm Mennonite. I said, oh, I've never heard of your religion. Would you mind sharing uh, a thing or two? 
This conversation led into a 15-minute conversation. The conversation kept going back and forth to the point where she asked me, we all have a prophet. Who is Muhammad? Why do you guys worship him? Where does Jesus stand? I don't know. She said, I love Jesus. I said, I love Jesus too. We actually have an entire chapter of the Quran dedicated to his mother, Miriam, Mary, Maria in Espanol. Um, and she was so surprised. And if anything that conversation did was clear the misconceptions that whatever she had. And so her name was Martha. And we ended with basically shaking hands. She didn't allow me to embrace her. And we have to respect each other as well when we're not allowed or, or people don't feel comfortable. And we need to ask, may I hug you? May I embrace you? And so, mashallah, um, I wish I would have exchanged numbers. I did with a lady from Taiwan at the harbor that I met. And um, we also started speaking. And um, she turned out to be a single mother. And we exchanged numbers. She's a physician. She says, you know, my ancestors are Buddhist. We migrated to Germany. And we converted into Baptist, but I don't believe anything. I think God sent you to me. I'm on a quest. So you have no idea who and when and where you will be touching somebody's life. We are walking Dawa every single day. For us sisters, take pride in this. We are little masjids. We are different. We are beautiful. We are beautiful. Take pride in it. You have no idea how proud I feel to be different. When I was in Mexico City, guess who I get um, uh, confused by? A nun. And so in Mexico, um, we call them madrecitas, which is like mothers. And so they kept calling me madrecita. I'm like, I'm not a nun. I'm actually, I have a kid. <laughs> um, but alhamdulillah, I mean, the, the, the conversations continue over and over. And I want to end with one thing. I want three things for you to take home tonight. When you see a revert, first and foremost, offer your support, even if it's just that smile. If you can offer a little more, please do so. Number two, show love and compassion immediately when you know because you have no idea where they've walked, where they've been with, how much baggage they have, what struggles they're going through. We need love. We need your love. When I'm asked, where is your family? I say my family consists of 1.8 billion Muslims. Which one? You are my family. You are my family. And finally, embrace each other with our vulnerabilities, with our defects, with our strengths, with our weaknesses. Let's learn to love one another for the sake of Allah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.